Hi guys, this is Sarah with Salmond, and today I'll be showing you how I made these fun and colorful posters using bathroom tiles, alcohol inks, and resin. They are so fun and easy to make, and the hardest part is waiting for the resin to dry. If you've never worked with resin before, this is a perfect beginner project, and you'll soon be hooked on this medium. But if you don't want to try resin at this point, just use my favorite standby, which is Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge. You will not get the smooth, glassy finish you will with resin, but they'll still look great and be water resistant. All right, time to quit chatting and get started. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure your tiles are really clean. What I do is I go ahead and spray them with a solution of 91% isopropyl alcohol. And this just gets any of the grease off and it prepares the surface for your alcohol inks. And then it's time for the fun to start. First thing I'm going to do is just take the lid off of some of my colors and I'm just going to drop them here at the bottom. Then I'm just going to spray. How fun is that? And you just spray until it's dry. Then I just move on to other colors until I have the entire bottom filled. And I was hoping that these drops would, would kind of blend in. I don't think they're going to, so if you mess up with alcohol inks, watch this. It's just this easy to start over. Spray it with your isopropyl alcohol. Just wipe it right off. All right, and that is all ready to go again. Now, the only place you're going to find that you can't clean it completely is here at the edges. That's okay because we're going to finish this. All right, so let's just start ourselves over again. If you want it to go up a little bit more, just add a little more to it, and the colors will meld together as you go. So you want to be sure you put colors together that will mix well so you don't end up with browns. And that's what we do. We just keep going through and just adding colors until you have the finished product looking how you like it. Now that I have all four coasters done to my liking, I'm going to seal them. I am going to use Kmar Varnish. Now you can use other sealers if you like, but keep in mind those other sealers may cause a splotchy appearance to your alcohol ink. Now while my coasters are drying, I am going to go ahead and use my Silhouette Cameo 4 
to cut out the word cheers for all four coasters. Then I'm going to go through and weed them so that they are ready to apply to the coasters once the varnish is dried and the coasters are sealed. Now, if you don't have a Silhouette Cameo 4, you can go ahead and pick up some stickers from any craft store and apply letter stickers to the coasters as well to give the same effect. I love the versatility that my Silhouette Cameo gives me, though. I use it for almost every project I work on, and it always gives the end project such a professional finish. And with the different types of vinyl, I can use it for almost any project I'm working on. Now that my coasters are dried and sealed, it's time to apply the lettering to the coasters. What I'm going to do is use a piece of transfer tape and I'm going to lay it over the lettering. And then you, using a scraper tool that I have um, for my vinyl projects, or you can even use a credit card, just something that you could put some firm, even pressure down over the lettering so that when you pull, peel the backing away, the lettering has adhered to the transfer tape. Then it's ready to simply apply onto the coaster itself. Now, if like here, some of the lettering wants to come up when you're trying to pull the backing off, just use your scraper tool and put a little more pressure on the backside. Then it's simply a matter of laying it over the coaster so that it's centered and a little light pressure from your fingers as you pull that transfer tape off is all it takes. Doesn't that look adorable? And how easy was that? Now, here's the coaster. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and painted the edging gold. I used a Krylon metal leafing pen and 24 karat gold to do this. I'm not sure what happened to the, the video of that, but that is what I did to all four coasters. And now I'm just using some painter's tape and I'm going to seal the bottom of all four coasters. And this is just in case my resin runs down the side of the coasters. We won't have a lot of problems with getting it off of the back of the coasters if it drips. This will make it a lot easier if that should happen. I am hoping it doesn't since I am using a doming resin, so it should not run for me. I'll be able to bring it right up to the edge and it won't run. Now it's time to mix the resin. For this project, I'm using art resin, which you mix parts A and part B in a 50-50 ratio. So what I've done is I've poured one ounce of part A and one ounce of part B, and I'm mixing it. I've set a timer for three minutes, and I'm mixing slowly so that I don't get a lot of air bubbles in it. Once that is done, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes to thicken up just a little bit before I pour it over my coasters. Now it's time to pour the resin over the coasters. I absolutely love working with resin. It's my new passion and it just gives everything such a professional finished look. So here I am just pouring a pool of resin over each of the coasters. Now you can do these one at a time if you want. I just chose to dump um, some of the resin over each coaster a little less than the maximum amount I thought I would need so it could start to spread a little bit on its own. Then I'm going to go back to the first coaster I'm going to work on and I'm going to start helping that resin move up to the edges of the coaster. And this resin being a little bit thick and being considered a doming resin you can move it right up to the edge and the viscosity of the liquid will help keep it from running over the edge. Now, if it does run over the edge, what we'll do is we'll just turn this into a complete pour over the coasters. But I really don't think we're going to need to do that because this seems to be setting up really nicely right up on the edge. So I'm going to complete this with all four of the coasters and then it's time to sit back and wait as the resin will take about 24 hours to set completely.
Now that I have the resin spread out over all four of the coasters, I'm going to use my heat gun to pop any bubbles that have formed in the resin. And as you can see, I'm using it moving constantly over the resin so it doesn't sit in one spot and burn any of the resin. If you don't have an industrial heat gun like this, you can use a craft heat gun like you'd use for paper crafts. That would work as well. And if you don't have one at all, you can use a straw and your breath to pop some of those bubbles. And the last thing you could do, if that doesn't work, is spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol over the resin, and that will also pop those bubbles for you. The biggest thing you want to be sure of is that you do not damage the resin when you're using your heat gun. Once this is done, you want to cover your project with something, whether it's a plastic bin or box, something just to keep any dust or dirt particles from landing on the wet resin. And then you have to let it sit for about 24 hours until that resin cures completely. All right, it's been 24 hours and my resin is dry. Look at this beautiful glassy sheen these have. I absolutely love how well these came out. None of the resin dripped over the edge whatsoever. It just ran right up to the edge and sat there until it dried. Now it's time to pull all the tape off the back. As it turns out, I didn't need it at all, but I figure better safe than sorry. Being painter's tape and a low-tack tape, I can still use this again on other projects. So it's not a complete waste, and honestly, it would have been a lot more expensive to have to deal with the hardened resin drips on the bottom of the coasters had they run over than the few pennies I wasted on the tape safeguarding them. Now for the last step on these coasters, I'm using E6000 and putting a liberal amount on the bottom of the coaster. Then I am going to glue on some cork backing, and this is to protect the table from the coasters so that it doesn't mar any of the surfaces you set it on. And I'm using a popsicle stick just to scrape off any of the extra E6000 that seeped out from underneath. I'm going to set these aside for a couple hours to dry, and then they are done. And once again, here is a picture of all four completed coasters. I am so excited to use these. I absolutely love the way they came out. I hope you did too. Be sure and let me know in the comments below if you like the colors, if you like the way these came out and what projects you might like to see next. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button as well as share it with friends who may also enjoy it. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button and when the notification bell pops up, be sure you hit that as well so you never miss a video. And as always, have a great day and stay crafty.